Hey guys, so uh, today we're gonna read The Man Who Made Parks. This is actually, you know, a book that someone makes parks. Yeah, someone makes parks. This guy is the guy who make parks. But not, not like all the parks in the world, but you know, like some parks he like, you know, loves nature, he was born from somewhere, he went to somewhere, something like those, there's everything in there. And we're gonna do the same as the, um, the um, little house, but you know, like one day, one chapter, or I mean one day, 20 pages, and one day, another 20 pages, sorry. Actually, this board fell. Let me put this ground. But we're not talking about boards. We're talking about books. That is called the man who built parks. Illustrated by Song Nan Zang. And the story of park builder Frederick Law Allsmilted. Okay. So, you know, it's a, it'll be a fun book. Uh, so, guys, let's start reading. But also, actually, you might see that there's peoples over here. This is what it looks like today that people go all around parks. And, you know, everything else that, you know... Like, if you're living in New York City, and then you're going to go to Central Park, it's like that. You need to a walk, there's playgrounds, there's anything over there, too. Like, also, other parks that, if you're living in Washington, D.C., you can go to that park that is next to the, the Capitol building or more parks. There's a lot of parks all around the world, too. Okay. The Man Who Builds Parks. Close your eyes. Imagine yourself in a city park, soft grass carpet to your feet. Wildflowers sway in the breeze. Towering trees surround you. So, let me check how much pages. So we're going to read like uh, 23, I mean 13 pages. And then the next day we're going to read another 13 pages. So yeah. First, back. Once there was no city parks. Many children grew up surrounded by dust and mud, stone and bricks. They lived in a small, dark, crowded apartment. Apartments. They played on dirty, treeless streets, dodging horses and garbage, and the air crackled. the The clatter of hooves and the shouts of vendors. There was no place to escape until a man named Frederick Law Allsmitted just for like you know for you to understand or you can call him Allsmitted yeah because the the whole name is like a very long name but also you can call him Allsmitted so you know that'll be a better name it's well you know a little bit letters on it you know it's good change cities forever Allsmitted changed the city he changed New York City and you know guys Guys, you know, these guys are living in New York City. See that? There's a girl over here, their mom, their dad, the brother, and the sister. 
And even guys, you might notice that it's raining outside and the boy is a little sad. He's sad because about it's raining. And you guys, you might also know that there's a string on top of here. A string. And that string is for like um they're drying their shirts. You also might see shirts over here in the string. So you yeah, know they're drying their shirts inside because it's raining. If it is raining, it cannot dry shirts. It can uh you know make the shirts wet. It can make uh, uh, the shirts will be wet, and then you know you cannot wear it. It'll, it's gonna be wet. So yeah, yeah, and even you their mo yeah, their mom is actually a, a working. Like, you know, I think they're actually making shirts and stuff because they might be poor because this was 1820. That was like more than 200 years ago. <sighs> so even guys, uh, there's like all normal stuff like a bed and like, you know, a kitchen. See that? A kitchen, bed, like everything. But this... Uh, this ha this whole entire house is one apartment, one room. It's not like a you know a four or something rooms, like your living room, and then you know your mom and dad's room, your selfie's room, the bathroom, the kitchen, the dining room. There's a lot of rooms, but they have their only their only room is just one room. They're all combined. There's no doors. So it can be like separated rooms, like you know, there's no doors between the um, the living room and the and the kitchen, and there's no doors between the living room and the bedroom. See that because a long time ago, there was only one room, only one room, and you know, some people were poor that time, only a little bit were rich, and you know, yeah. These guys were poor. And also, uh, there is a pen over there. So, you know, you know, in the past times, you know, there's older pens, not like the pens that are today. Like, you know, they're beautiful pens for today. But the other time, like in the long time ago, like more than 200 years ago, there was old pants and you know in new york city that time there was not two tall buildings there were very small and like you know the buildings were like five to ten floors but for today in new york city it's like more than a hundred floors or even more than 20 floors more than 50 floors more than something floors even more than one floors like in the queens of brooklyn and bronx parts there's like you know houses all around that have two or one floors but even in some other parts like in brooklyn bronx and queens they also have taller buildings like i live in queens in a very tall building and in manhattan also have like houses in the north manhattan like in the upper manhattan there's like houses like small houses too like the same as all other boroughs even like stack island has filled houses even but in the north or i think east of Staten island there is a little bit of tall buildings but they're not too tall they're like five floors or even 10 20 floors something like those but you know it's a very short building in Staten island all submitted was born in hartford connecticut in 1822 if you live in connecticut and uh, hartford that's good you know hartford is a good place to live it has a lot of parks it's like a good place the capital of connecticut yeah he was born in 1822 he when he was oh my goodness just fell give me a second Just uh sorry because uh something happened. Yeah, full page. This is nothing, just something happened. Yeah. There. Because this book is a very old book. 
that a million of pages are cut. Oh my There's a million pages cut. It. This is an old book. Like you know, it might be built. In, it might be made in the twenty first century. No, I mean like in the twenty first zero zero. Like you know, yeah, or like two thousand twelve, something like those. Those are like you know, long years ago. They were like nine or ten years ago, maybe. Maybe it was made in ten years ago. That's why it's old. <sighs> As a young boy, he loved to wander over the rolling hills and valleys of the beautiful New England countryside. His wandering days ended, however, when he, wa he was sent away to boarding school. Frederick hated the overbearing schoolmasters and harsh remain and long, longed to go home. One summer... To his relief, and a bad bout of poison smack, smack prevented him from returning, returning to school. He was free to wander again, meandering down quite, quite country, paths lined with brilliant, brilliant wild flowers, watching the watching cattle graze in the listening, what in the Fields listening, the rustle, rustle of the trees and sweet song of birds. Although, uh, although Frederick hadn't hadn't liked to confinement of school, he loved to read and he loved to read and learn. He read books in his father's library, especially especially those about the magnificent parks and gardens in England. Frederick thought they were beautiful. He became so interested in parks, he suggested his father to plant more trees on their property to improve the view. Though he, he didn't realize if then Frederick had designed his first park. He designed his first park. Uh, you know, design, I think it means for he built it a, a park. Like, you know, he made a park. I mean, like, he designed the park. Like, you know, in one kind of park, he designed some stuff on it, maybe like this. Yeah. Or even he built it a park. Like, only just put seeds all around a small or big grass area. And, you know, that's not an easy task to do. That's a hard task because you need to wait for the trees and, and flowers, grass to grow. And, you know, it might take a long time for them to grow. Maybe, like, years. Like, six, three, four, one, something years. Not, like, even one month. But, you know, you know. Um, if you see like the tree is small, that means like um, it stood there like one or three or two um twelve months maybe yeah like those. The tree uh, first of all the tree starts with a seed, then ends with a big humongous tree. Yeah, but in national parks actually there is like big humongous trees, and the tallest tree in the world is in California, and that's so high up that's i think taller than the statue of liberty or almost taller than the statue of liberty but also people also go there but also um in the picture of here here uh, you might see him over here that his name is again i told you it is um, where is he what is his name oh Frederick, i think yeah, Frederick. And he's actually watching all around. And, like, you know, watching the trees, the squirrels all around there, and the grass. Because, and you might notice there is, like, leaves all around the floor, and that means fall. It is fall in that time. <sighs> he, it would be, be many years he did so again. Okay. 
While his formal education ended, Frederick drifted one of carrier to another. At 16, he became a surveyor mapping and measuring land. At 18, he worked in New York import businesses, sitting on a stool for hours, adding up in columns of numbers. At 20, he sailed aboard the clipper of the Ronson bound for China. At 24, he worked as a farmer, but none of those professions suited Frederick or made him happy. Then Frederick heard that his ador adored younger brother, John, planned to embark, embark on a walking tour of England for his health. Frederick begged to join him. Together, they roamed the English countryside, reveling in the beauty of, land, of the landscape near living, living, Liverpool. Frederick viewed his first public park, Brick, Brickenhead Park, Brickenhead Park, the um, People's Park. He was enchanted by its winding paths open fields, lakes, bridges, and summer houses. Most of all, he loved the fact of the park was open to all the residents of the city. He later wrote, all this magnificent pleasure ground is entirely unreserved, unreserved, unreservedly and forever the people's own. That doesn't make any sense, but you know, yeah, some books actually accidentally wrote a thing that doesn't make any sense. But we're not talking about any senses and stuff. We're talking about the books again, I told you. And here's uh, him, uh, Frederick, that the years passed by like 18 to 20, 24, something, you know, 30, maybe 27. Let's see. He was working a lot of times and all of his work didn't make him happy because, you know, I don't know why it didn't make him happy, but he was not happy of all of his work that he done. He was not happy. And you know, he was fat, I call it. Maybe, yeah. And yeah, he goes, he was sad. He was, yeah, yeah, he was sad. He was something, he was something. Yeah, yeah, he's like this. But also, um, you might also see that Frederick over here. Is, oh my goodness, these pages are falling. Still, okay. Frederick, you might see that Frederick is farming over here. He is farming. 